After Ahimsa, Satya is the second under the Yama guideline. The Yamas and Niyamas are the foundational to all yogic thoughts. And the Yamas and Niyamas provide the foundational teachings we need in order to live a joyful, peaceful and moral life. So friends, let us explore the second of the five yamas, Satya, or truthfulness. Given that this sutra comes, under, uh, comes after Ahimsa, it assumes that if we are practicing reverence, that is deep respect for all beings, then we understand that telling the truth must be delivered with kindness and sensitivity. We are not meant to be merciless, or to serve our self-interest. The essential gauge for whether our truth telling is necessary lies in our intention. A bit of self-reflection will reveal. What is Satya? Satya means true essence or true nature. It means pure and unchangeable. That which exists that which has no distortions, that which is beyond time, space and person. It also means fact or reality. Being truthfulness not only in words, but actions and intentions too. The practice of this second yama of satya requires deep understanding a lot of awareness and a delicate balance of honesty. Regrettably, telling the truth is sometimes dangerous. You might lose a friend, status or access to decision making or credibility. We may lie to protect ourselves or because we believe that we know what is best for another person or group. Lying can be justified when the good consequences outweighs the bad. The downside is that lying, any lying, eats away the trust that people have upon you. Truthfulness or satya often requires that we make difficult admissions or changes within our lives. It takes courage because in making personal change, we expose ourselves to potential rejections if others do not agree or like what we are sharing. Conversely, we may feel threatened if someone else share her truthfulness with us and we do not like what we hear in either directions, compassionately bearing witness to truth is required. Practicing the combination of Satya and Ahimsa, we maintain an open heart rather than indulge the natural tendency to shut down or fire back. Satya requires that we be willing to learn through hurt and failure sometimes to forgive others and ourselves and to act courageously even when we are fearful. As difficult as these are, ultimately truth is worth it. It is essential to our inner well-being and to our ability to cultivate real relationships. It is also what gives us the needed direction, vision and energy to make our lives how we want them to be. When we are firmly established in truthfulness, this sutra says that we gain the power of effortlessness. Not all truth needs speaking. This sutra warns that satya is so powerful that when we dedicate ourselves to integrity, our thoughts, words and actions gain the power to manifest. Truth is a dynamic state of mind in which infinite power is released. 
Of course, with this power comes responsibility. Recognizing that truth is full of consequences, both positive and negative. We acknowledge this power is not to be taken lightly. The biggest misconception about Satya is that it advocates truth at all costs. And this is not the case. Swami Vivekananda, one of the first Hindu teachers to share yoga philosophy with the West, taught that the practice of intentional peacefulness, that is Ahimsa, supersedes Satya and therefore moderates the belief that we should share everything all the time without restraint. A bit of self-reflection will reveal the reason why we want to share a piece of truth or why we may wish to withhold it. Is it to make us feel superior or vindicated in some way? Truth should only be shared if it is based on a loving intent to foster deeper understanding and harmony. When shared in this way, truth, no matter how difficult, can be healing, balancing and opening, blessing all the lives it touches. If not, then we need to practice more truthfulness with ourselves about our motivations for sharing. If we discover a hidden agenda that is self-serving in some way, then we should be honest about that. Wisdom and humility are the best guides to right speech. Ultimately, there is one simple criteria for assessing truth that will never steer us wrong. It requires willingness to set aside fear, hurt, desire and pride in order to know it. The criteria is love. Whatever is anchored in love is truth and we can always trust truth. When it is based in love, when we live truthfully from love, we become fearless, free and able to lead the life that is uniquely ours to live. The practice of Satya delivers us true inner power. Now let us focus on some daily practice. Integrate an active practice of truthfulness into your daily life. Search inwardly in body, mind and intuition for the truth and have courage to live into it. Watch your words for a day. Are they kind, necessary, peace inducing? Speak only if they meet all these criteria. Not all truth needs saying. Spend a few moments in silence reflecting on your deepest level of truth about a current issue. Step courageously into speaking and acting from your most authentic place. Increase the habit of telling the truth. If you live in truth, you will have peace of mind, free from fear, anxiety and worry. When you are true to yourself and to others in thoughts, words and action, people will respect you from all walks of life. Those that live in truth have the power of the universe behind their thoughts and intentions. It is said that if a person makes truth the main focus of their life, every word that they speak will become true. Because such a person is incapable of untruth. The practice of truthfulness means being truthful under all circumstances. Even if it is inconvenient, for example, there are some people returning from holidays abroad. 
that avoid paying tax duty on expensive goods that they have brought back. They lie to the customs officers and walk through the green light that says nothing to declare. Others tell lies and act dishonestly when they have to fill in their yearly tax returns, trying to reveal something partially and keeping something back is also a kind of dishonesty. Thinking something inside while appearing to be something else outside is also a contradiction of truth. But on occasions, that can also be an act of kindness and compassion. In order to uphold Ahimsa, temporarily, you may have to slightly deviate from truthfulness. For example, you see a beggar on the street who has a disfigured face due to a fire accident. Perhaps you feel revolted inside, but for fear that you might hurt this person's feeling if you turn away in disgust. You put on a calm appearance, smile from your heart and kindly give him a small monetary offering to help him. In this way, you avoid hurting his feelings by not outwardly showing your revulsions. It is not wholly an expression of truth, but it becomes justifiable because you have managed to uphold the higher dharma of compassion, of ahimsa. Truth that harms is considered equal to untruth. We have to see the consequences of our conduct and behavior before we can decide whether it is virtuous or not. When truthfulness endangers the life of innocent people, should we be truthful? Nurturing relationships with skillful practice of satya. There is a beautiful Sufi saying, before you speak, let your words pass through three gates. At the first gate, Ask yourself, is it true? At the second gate, ask, is it necessary? At the third gate, ask, is it kind? Ellen Ridpath, a well-known British evangelist, pastor and author, explains the word think beautifully. Where T stands for, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? And K, is it kind? If what I am about to say does not pass those tests, I will keep my mouth shut. Unfortunately, people mistake Satya for just speaking words. Many people consider being bluntly honest as truthful. It is very easy to be blunt and be truthful, but does it serve any purpose? Does that help in any way in your relationships, either within family or at workplace? The practice of Satya is not about blindly and heedlessly telling the truth without considering the consequences. It is much more about restraint, about taking our time and carefully considering our thoughts and words, so that the way in which we express the truth helps. So before you speak the satya, that is truthfulness, you need to check on ahimsa too. Do not be blunt. For example, your wife asks whether she looks beautiful or not. You have no options. If you say the truth, then you suffer. <laughs> and that will also lead to ahimsa. Just tell her that she is beautiful 
and that's ahimsa, that is uh, non-violence. Till then, take care, keep smiling, namaste.